Hi, After Buzzers. Today I'm in studio with Rob Lake. He is the youngest magician to ever receive the Merlin Award. That is for the International Stage Magician of the Year. It's the equivalent of an Emmy or an Oscar. It is so important, and he is going to do magic in studio with me. All this and more coming up. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I love the audience clapping. I know you're so used to huge audiences clapping for you, but it just makes me feel so good starting with sure, that. Sure, well, this big studio audience here, you know, clapping for us, I can see why you like that. Yes, <laughs> it really, you know, pumps things up. Absolutely. Our studio audience of one after buzzers. Yeah. We have one live person in here with us, and all of you, yay! That's right. <laughs> so I'm your host, Zoe Hewitt. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Zoe Hewitt. And sitting to my left is Rob Lake. Where can everyone find you? Uh, let's see, Instagram and Twitter, Rob Lake Magic, and Facebook, Rob Lake Official. Okay, now, while I was doing all this research to talk sure. to you, I kept watching your videos over and over again, yes. going like, oh my god, how does he do that? But sort of in a rhetorical way, like I said, like, I don't want to know. It's more fun if you don't know, <laughs> for sure. It's so much fun! Yeah. So how did you first get into magic? Uh, Hogwarts. No, <laughs> I wish. You got your letter at 11? I did, I did, I did. <laughs> I was the first American wizard to go. Nice. No, basically, I, I got started as a kid when I was about 10 years old in magic, and I just knew that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I from there, I never grew up. And so, like, did someone get you a magic kit, like one of those starter magic kits? I, I saw a magic show when uh -huh. I was 10, I knew. And then when I got back, it was during summer, so as soon as school started, I went to the library, and I got every book I could find on magic. And, mm -hmm. And I had magic kits, and I went to the public library, and uh, a few local magicians helped mm -hmm. mentor and help me. And I just really, really had to self-study quite a bit. Because, uh -huh. like, where do you go if you want to learn magic more than the beginner kit? Sure. I mean, that's the, that's where most magicians started. Uh -huh. And uh, I joined a local amateur magic organization, Magic uh -huh. Club, where uh -huh. we'd meet once a month and share tricks and uh -huh. share magic. And uh, but really, it was just a lot of mail order magic tricks and books and <laughs> DVDs and you uh -huh. know, well, back then it was VHS tapes, uh -huh. to be honest. And, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, like, what did your parents say when you first said, like, Mom, Dad, I want to be a magician when I grow up? You know, up? I think at first they thought, oh, this is a really cute hobby. Uh -huh. uh, but then whenever I quit school or, you know, left college to do uh -huh. this full time, it, it raised some eyebrows. Uh -huh. And at what point did they say, oh, okay, honey, like, now it's okay? Sometimes I still think they're saying that. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, a couple of years ago, once I started, you know, having some successful tours around uh -huh. the world and, and making things happen. And it's funny because it takes so long sometimes sure. for people to accept that because you have toured all over the world. I mean, so many different countries. You've been in Times Square. I mean, you've yeah. been in huge places. And just recently, it's like, well, you're doing a great job, honey. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Maybe there's something to this. It just might work. Right. You might be on the right track that's after right. all. That's right. <laughs> and so what is the difference between magic and an illusion? Uh, magic is more broad. So illusion is a type of, of magic. Illusion would be the large stage production with uh, large objects like a helicopter or a motorcycle in our right. show or assistance, whereas magic kind of encompasses that, but yeah. close-up magic would be card tricks or coin tricks or smaller magic. So illusionist is a stage magician. Oh, specifically. Specifically. So, so like if you're going to see a show like in Las Vegas, for instance, it would always be called an illusion Mo show. Most of the time, most of the time, uh -huh. unless they were doing smaller magic even on the stage. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. So the big like touring production. So Correct. So when you tour, how do you get all of your equipment placed? You must have a lot of equipment. For I do. We have four semi-trucks that travel the show. Mm -hmm. And so it's quite a bit in a big team. I have a mm -hmm. wonderful cast and crew who uh, many of have them have been with me for years. Uh -huh. And so we just travel like a giant, uh, <laughs> like, a like an army. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so how often does your show change? I am always coming up with new illusions. I'm always mm -hmm. trying to think of new magical uh, things for the show, ways mm -hmm. to improve the show, ways to evolve what I'm already mm -hmm. doing. And I, it can take several years for an illusion to make it into the show. One of the illusions that we just put in the show last year, I'd been working on for almost eight years. <gasps> wow. And it's the most difficult illusion I've done. And it's uh, the hardest part of the entire show. And so what happens during those eight years? Is it just like you have an idea and maybe you'll try to figure out how to make it work? Like what, what is it that takes Sure, sure. Usually I'll have an idea of what the audience would see, kind of the presentation or the okay. effect. And then we reverse engineer all the different methods and options to make it happen. Uh -huh. And then we'll build prototypes and, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. test things and maybe try different elements about in a show just to see how that would work or play with an audience and then uh go back to the drawing board many times and start over and try again and so like to me even just conceiving of these ideas seems so 
impossible. Mm -hmm. I guess, is it just something that after doing this for a while, you're used to like, oh, I want to cut someone in half in this other way. Like, how do you even start with a new idea? Sure. Well, I've, I started when I was 10 and I started studying magic and I've been see deceiving people for most of my life now. <laughs> uh, but I've, you know, I've studied the methods of magic. It's similar to music, how mm -hmm. there are only so many instruments or so many notes, mm -hmm. just how you arrange them to make a composition. Mm -hmm. So in magic, there are only so many methods and so many effects. Mm -hmm. It's just how you arrange them to put them together. Oh, interesting. And so in 2013, you did a trick that was like right out of a movie and you had, you made an armored truck with I a million did. dollars just appear Absolutely. in front of an audience in Memphis. So yeah. did they come to you and say, we want to do this? How did that happen? Sure. I'd, I've had done quite a bit of work with uh, Harrah's and Caesars Casinos, which are the biggest gaming you know, mm -hmm. company in the world. And they were doing a promotion where they were going to give away a million dollars a week mm -hmm. cash uh, to a players club member at most of their properties. And to launch this promotion, they had the idea of uh, making an armored truck magically appear. Mm -hmm. So we said, sure, we'd love to do it. Then they called back and said, can you do it outdoors? So we said, mm -hmm. sure. And they called back, can you do it in two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> so it was the most difficult illusion I've ever done because it was outdoors. Mm -hmm. It had 15,000 people watching it live all around it. And uh, I had less than two weeks to create an illusion mm -hmm. involving a truck that weighed more than 20 tons. Right, like how does that happen? <laughs> I feel I like don't that's know just my refrain. I don't want to know, but how no, does I don't that even happen? Think, uh, I don't even think I could do it again if I had to. <laughs> just under this. I didn't sleep for two weeks. And, uh -huh. and we had, uh, had to pull every effort of everything I'd learned in my whole career up to that point had applied to that. It was really neat when the truck appeared and it had worked because little details weren't working out until the very last second. And it all came together. Uh -huh. And it was really neat because almost like time kind of froze for a uh -huh. moment. And I was able to realize all the good and bad lessons I'd learned helped me prepare for that. And so how much does your heart just sort of stop? Like if you're saying like up to that moment, you didn't even know for sure there had been some kinks in the illusion. Like sure. how much does your heart stop going like, okay, now here it is. Hope this works. Um, you, it's kind of like when you, when you test step on stage, it just takes over. You're kind of right. in that zone and you just have to trust that you, right. ever, you, know, you can only do the best you can do. And that's the kind of my motto, not to be reckless or careless, but to prepare the best I can. And then just ultimately when it's showtime, just turn it on and do the <laughs> that's best. <it>. That's right. <laughs> and despite preparation, mm -hmm. things always happen. Absolutely. And so have you ever been left on stage going, uh, or is it more like, and now the improv takes over and you just fix it? And absolutely. We, 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 we tour. Mm -hmm. So every theater is different. Mm -hmm. Every setup is different. You know, on one stage, everything might be stored back this way or that way. So the flow of the show changes every night and uh, different limitations for the theaters. Mm -hmm. So we have to plan every possible contingency of what could go wrong because sometime out of our hundreds and thousands of shows we do, mm -hmm. it will go wrong. There's right. just no way around it. Right. It's Murphy's Law. Yeah. <laughs> um, but luckily we rehearse every possible thing we can conceive. So we always know the plan at B or C or D. Uh -huh. So if something happens, we automatically go into that direction and the yeah. audience never knows. And you're so used to working with the same cast and crew that everyone sort of can read each other's minds. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if I start saying certain uh -huh. things, they say, oh, he's skipping this or going uh -huh. on to here, you know, and we, and we can make like it back. Or they'll, or they'll, they'll <laughs> get, get, you know, get my uh -huh. attention and, you know, hold up a sign from the side of the stage that says, you know, s skip to whatever. So got it. Yeah. All those behind the scenes things. Sure. Absolutely. But speaking of it looking like something out of a movie when you made the truck yes. up here, you actually have this really cool, I guess, not side job, like it's a real job, but actually consulting with TV shows oh, and, and that's movies a lot of fun. and yeah. theater performances. And mm -hmm. I had no idea like I just picture like movie magic but someone has to actually like make that happen so how does a production come to you like what do they say and how do you fix their problem well I, I love magic and I love creating illusions so sometimes I create magic and illusions for TV shows or films that have a magician character who's normally an actor and so uh, or they might need magic props for a magic warehouse set so they'll call us to rent our props or have me work with their writers to, you know, what would a magician say or do or think, or how can this actor learn how to do a trick for the camera? And then we've also done the same for stage shows, musicals, Phantom of the Opera, and Peter Pan, and Wizard of Oz, and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And uh, it's fun because I get to create magic in, a, in another world, you know, in, a, in that fantasy world. I mm -hmm. get to be part of that to create the magic, and which is normal to that world. Mm -hmm. And so, like in working with Beauty and the Beast, for instance, mm -hmm. like the part that I think of is the beast turning into right, the prince. Right. Are there other elements? Oh, there are. Uh, and and th th that's why people call us, because the script, when they do the show, whether it's a uh, professional company or a regional company, mm -hmm. the script says the beast transforms into the prince. Mm -hmm. So that's when we get the phone call. <laughs> How? Uh, exactly. So uh, we've done over a thousand productions of Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. in the last, uh, I guess, 15 years or so. 
but uh, it's fun because it, and again each theater is different so it's challenging because you know having to create the magic for what they can do mm -hmm. but we also do the enchanted rose and the magic mirror and mm -hmm. Uh, turn a kid into a teacup and things like that for, for the show. Oh, so that's interesting. So, like, the teacup is considered magic? Like, when Correct. I've seen Beauty and mm -hmm. the Beast, and I saw it recently, in fact, down okay. at the Candlelight Pavilion here, like, it's a cup and the kid's sitting on, like, the, a, um, a, a, a like I a tea think, card. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I can't yeah. think of the word. I'm just yeah. gesturing for anyone who's like listening. They're like, what's happening? <laughs> yes, on a cart. And his face is there. So that's considered magic uh, too. We offer, you know, once we started doing a few Beauty and the Beast, we thought, mm -hmm. okay, what else can we offer people? Uh, you know, because people would come to us, oh, uh, the transformation was great, but can you do something for the rose? Or uh, can you do something for Chip? Uh, uh, or these other things. So I created illusions. Uh, so where you know, all you see is this kind of head inside uh, of the teacup and his body is nowhere to be seen. And I feel really bad. Did I just like give it away? No, totally? no, no, not I at all. I felt like that was an obvious, like if I know what's no, happening. No, if, if you saw like our version, you probably wouldn't, so. <laughs> that's the, yeah. like, I'm sure, because yeah. I feel like if I can tell, then I know. <laughs> no, if you can tell, it's, it's not, not good it's magic. It's not real so. magic. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> I can never tell. <laughs> <laughs> but that's amazing also because I, I also picture, I guess, like when a production is going to be launching like Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. that they've done it in the theater before so if they don't know someone still connected to the theater says oh yeah this is how we go about doing it and so it's just fascinating to me that I had not thought of that you need a consultant to come right, in right. or like you say to an actor who's supposed to be doing magic correct, correct. and that makes me think of like modern family because Phil is a magician sure. right? yeah. so how do you teach actors then the tricks or do you wait for the writers to say this is the trick we want I've d there's no right or wrong formula it's mm -hmm. always been different sometimes okay. they will call me during the writing phase mm -hmm. and say here you know we look over the script and say well uh -huh. a magician would really more likely say this or do this mm -hmm. and or I'd say that's gonna be very challenging to teach an actor you know in oh, this a quick session okay. to do and so but here's what you can do to accomplish the same kind of thing so, or sometimes they'll say, here's our script, can you help us make this happen? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm traveling, I will Skype with them sometimes mm -hmm. and talk to them or go on set or teach them or work with them. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Because like, there might be another way to get to oh, the sure. same outcome exactly. of what exactly. they want that's less complicated. Right, right. I guess it's like a beginner level magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> beginner, sure, medium, sure. and like the advanced illusionist. Right, <laughs> absolutely. And so, and speaking of travel, you spend like 75% of your time on the road, is oh, that right? Oh, more than that for sure. And that's a lot of time yes. traveling. You must I have live some. in hotels. <laughs> <laughs> you must. So what is it like waking up pretty much every day in a new place? Do you have a chance to tour while you're in different places? Absolutely. I, I love traveling. And even after a tour, I will add on a vacation time to see things in that area or in that region or nearby. But I, I love it. And But there are things I've had to do to make it feel more like home. Like I travel with my own kitchen set up. I have my juicer and my blender, a little stove top. I've, I've set up some smoke alarms in hotels before from <laughs> making my own food because I get wonderful food, but sometimes you want just real right. homemade food as best you can do in yeah. a hotel bathroom. <laughs> uh, but I, I love to travel, so it's mm -hmm. really a great thing. And the hardest thing about traveling was missing a dog. Mm -hmm. So I uh, bring my dog with me most of the time. And you're very much into animal rescue, right? So yes, your dog's a rescue. absolutely. He is. All my dogs my whole life have been rescues. And uh, I have one now that uh, I saw him. Uh, I was home visiting my grandparents and my family, and I mm -hmm. took my grandparents to lunch. We saw this this adoption event, mm -hmm. and I adopted uh, this dog, and my grandparents got the little female that he was rescued with, too. So they still get to see each other and play. Oh, and, that's nice. And, uh, but he's been great for me uh -huh. and on the road. And so he just comes. Does, do you ever incorporate him? I did. I put him in the show. Uh -huh. uh, he has he has a, he has a couple cameos in the <laughs> show, and he completely steals the show. <laughs> of course, right? Yes. Working with animals isn't that? It's, oh, it's great. But <laughs> but it's it's fun because as soon as I'm off stage, it's like uh -huh. being home. You know, your dog greets you mm -hmm. and just happy to see you. <laughs> and then you juice your juice in your hotel bathroom. Exactly. Right? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> you're all set. Right. <laughs> so what have you noticed? Are there differences among the audiences that you've performed for, especially like international audiences? Uh, yes and no. Little things um, are different, but overall, magic is magic. You know, we, whether you're in Japan or Germany or or California, mm -hmm. gravity is gravity. So if somebody's levitating, it's okay. you know it's pretty magical. Right. But a lot of the Asian cultures that I perform for, magic is a big part of their culture. Mm -hmm. They have a very mystical approach to several things. So there's a lot more awe and excitement right. uh, and and in their approach, and it's almost like a nervous energy for them in a great way. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's more of a, a little more entertainment driven up front. That's interesting. I mean, it makes sense that different cultures mm -hmm. are going to respond differently, which was the reason for the question. Sure. But, <laughs> but it's interesting that the sort of the mystical element right. from them is what changes that or sure, influences, yeah. I guess. Exactly. Which makes sense as well. So 
when you perform, um, for instance, like you were not too long ago in Atlantis, right? Yes, Down in the I was Bahamas there for, for a couple years. Yeah. Oh, oh, for, uh, for uh, about two, two and a half years, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. a nice long time. I was. Had so, a great tan. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> so when you're like in residence, yes. I guess, in a place, does that mean you're done traveling other places? Like you're there for that time period? Uh, for right? the most part, um, I still had other things. I mm -hmm. still would, uh, on days off or things, fly to other events or other yeah. kind of shows. And then we did a Europe tour. Um, I think it was either right after it or in the middle, you know, where we had a little bit of a break when they had downtime and we took that. But I was pretty much parked there for that time. And so do you start to get like twitchy feet that you're so used to being on the road constantly? Sometimes I do. I, I actually sometimes do. Uh -huh. I, I do. But it was wonderful because uh, it's a quite an endeavor to tour the show and to be able to not have to pack up every uh -huh. night. To have a little, bit, a little more settled than normal uh -huh. is great. And so where is your favorite place to perform? Oh, that's a great question. And um, not, not as a cop-out answer, but the mm -hmm. truth is I love performing. Mm -hmm. And with the spotlight in my eye, mm -hmm. you know, I really can't tell where, <laughs> where I'm at. And because uh -huh. the response, no matter whether it's Asia or Europe mm -hmm. or the Caribbean or America, yeah. the response is still strong and mm -hmm. still, and everybody still likes magic. So for me, just getting to perform is an exciting, and it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's something I'm grateful every day, you know, to, to enjoy my life and yeah. really perform this. So it's hard to say the, the different I have places I love to visit and travel. Mm -hmm. So if I'm there, you know, I can finish a show and go, mm -hmm. you know, see a show in London yeah. or, you know, or, or, you know, go to Disneyland when I'm out here and things like <laughs> that. So, And so with, um, with all the different shows and all the different places and performances, mm -hmm. you must have like packing up not only your stuff, but all of your set pieces, oh, sure. I guess, right down to a science. Absolutely. It's, I mean, when you say four truckloads, it's hard for me to even, I guess, fathom moving all that on such a regular basis. Oh, right. So do you have doubles of things? Like if you have to be somewhere, like to make sure it doesn't, you know. If uh, sometimes we do. No, I mean, it's not an exact duplicate, uh -huh. but I have lots of illusions because I'm always changing things and, you know, mm -hmm. switching things in and out. So we have enough where we can kind of finagle and do yeah. double bookings when we need to. Mm -hmm. Um not that one's lesser than the other one. Right. It's just, you know, we have enough that of we can't, if I put everything in one show, it'd be a six hour show. <laughs> <laughs> right. That'd be a long time for me to be on stage. <laughs> lots of water. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and lots of energy. Yes. But absolutely. I imagine, I mean, like everyone loves magic. So do you find, like, why do you think people just like me, like I'm so into it. Like, why do you think people love it so much? I think even now more than ever, mm -hmm. if you look, you know, outside, it's a stressful time. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think why I liked magic in the beginning is I had that sense of wonder, mm -hmm. that excitement that anything is possible. Right. So even in my show, I said, you know, there's a spotlight in my eye. I can still see the people's faces. Mm -hmm. I can still, you know, feel them and hear them. And even the hardest skeptic, mm -hmm. for just a brief moment, they let go of mm -hmm. how did he do that? And you just see this little smile, this genuine smile, that mm -hmm. childlike wonder is on their face. And just for that moment, anything could be possible. And so that, I think that's really the root of why magic works and why we all like magic, even people who say they don't like magic. You know, whenever you, they see something amazing, they just can't help but say, wow. Right. And it's that child in them mm -hmm. saying, wow. And then, you, you know, they'll come back to mm -hmm. where they were before. But just for that moment, they're saying, wow. And it's that great feeling that if this could happen, then mm -hmm. anything is, uh, is possible. Right. And everyone wants to like go back to that feeling, I think. I think so. Too. I think so. Even if we don't admit it or realize it, um, you know, life and, mm -hmm. s and the world is stressful and, and scary mm -hmm. sometimes. So just to be able to l almost mm -hmm. kind of subconsciously force that on them, mm -hmm. it's, that's the root of magic. And so when people hear that you're a magician, do you get more people who say, ooh, can I show you a magic trick? Or ooh, can you show me a magic trick? Oh, they, they <laughs> more, more, you know, no, 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 it's definitely me show them, so. <laughs> I mean, have you run into other people who say like, oh, let me show you my trick? A few times, uh, magicians will come see the show, which uh -huh. is great, and I love to meet, I do, uh, do greets after every show. Uh -huh. And so a lot of magicians, you know, will give me their business card or show me a trick they've been working on, so that's uh -huh. really fun. Uh -huh. And it show show you like can you give me pointers or does it show you like hey in case you're looking for someone in your show? Uh, no, no, it's more <laughs> it's more for uh, kind of the fraternity of magic and just mm -hmm. you know kind of feedback or they they're they're excited about what they've created mm -hmm. and want to share it. Okay, and I am excited about this potential magic. So yes. I would love to see some. I know you. Okay, you, I know you some. couldn't bring anything like yeah. huge. I was really no, couldn't forward. fit through the door. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the whole, all the trucks are out front. They just <laughs> they're you know getting parking tickets now. <laughs> We were all about to do a magic show out on the That's street. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to levitate out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd go viral. Yes. So, yeah, I'd love to see some magic. Okay. And we can describe it for anyone who's listening instead of watching All right. Us. Uh, this is a card trick. Okay. And how would you describe cards? I'm just kidding. <laughs> the card deck is red. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, 
I see a three of spades. Yep, these are all different, but okay. actually different is how they come from the factory. Okay, that's so, how you want cards yeah. usually. And I want you to choose a card, okay. and um, don't say it yet, especially for people listening. Okay. Uh, I want you just to think of it. Okay. Now, don't like pick one prematurely. I want you to look at the cards as I deal them onto the table face okay. up. Like so, um, and whenever you've got one, let me get a few cards passed. Okay. So just watch these cards. You don't, I mean, you can look at my eyes if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I see the reflection yeah. of the card. Oh, can you see the cards okay? I can see the okay, cards. Okay, perfect. So I just, can see the cards. Just find the card that really kind of speaks to you that you know that's the card I was okay. destined to pick. So, And then once you've chosen one, um, you can say stop. So don't like hunt your favorite card or something you've okay. thought of before. Okay, or the stop. Card you, so one of these is yours? Yes. Okay. Um, and you had free choice. You, we could have gone one of 52 cards, correct? Right. But we could have. We, we didn't. And I, I, we have about 10 cards here yeah. for anyone who's listening. Uh, so we dealt, and free choice, dealt, uh, yeah. they're all different cards. You could have stopped anywhere. Right. Out of curiosity, yes. on a scale of 1 mm -hmm. to uh, 10, how amazed would you be if I could name your card? So amazed! I didn't say a word! I know, but like, how amazed? At 1 to 10, how would you rate it? Oh, 10. Perfect. Not more than 10? <laughs> All right. No, I need to be cut in half for that. So now's the part. I want you to look me in the eyes. <laughs> okay. Focus right here. I'm focusing. Yes, yes, yes. I'm seeing your card. No way. And I'm going to name your card Canada. Why are you naming my card I Canada? just told you I was going to name your card. Okay, okay. It's a lovely name. It's a great name for a card, I was don't born you think? in Canada, Were you actually. Really? I was. How ironic and special. I, wonder I if know. I'm like, how did you know that? That's cool. <laughs> so, so the cool thing, you know, I think, okay, what's the trick? But uh -huh. there's not much of a trick. This deck of cards I got in an airport uh -huh. is called Around the World. Okay. Because every uh, card in the deck has a, no has a um, country they, on it. Printed. They all have flags on the back. Yeah, and um, so they have a red pattern with flags. Yeah. And every card. Which one was your card? The five of hearts. Pull it out. No way. Pull it. Check the back. Ah! What say? It's Canada, you guys. How did that happen? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> It didn't even look like there were, like, I only saw the red originally. I, I didn't know. even think there was a pattern. I know, I know. <sighs> Amazing. This is so cool because I'm, like, up close and personal with the magic. That's right. Wait, don't we get more? You want more? Yeah. We'll tack some more. We'll get some more in a little bit. Like I said, I could do, like, five minutes of, like, can I you know tell you me could. your name? And then, like, another 40 minutes of... So let's see some right, magic right. because it's amazing. So um, when you start conceiving of a new illusion, mm -hmm. you talked about it took you eight years from sort of start to finish sure. with this newest one. I presume they're not always that long in between. It's not always like an eight-year endeavor. Um, sometimes they're a lot quicker. Uh, I thought of one um, last summer, and it went to the show in the winter. So it lasted about wow. six months to get that one in the show. And is it always like the uh, building of equipment that takes so long, like figuring out how to do it? It's everything. It's the engineering. It's uh -huh. the design, how it's going to look on stage. We mm -hmm. want it to look pretty exciting and cool. It's the staging of it, the music and the presentation. And it's also the engineering and the fabrication, you know, whether it's made of metal or wood, and then how we have to be able to take it apart to fit on a truck to travel. And so do people come up to you, like other people who work with you mm -hmm. even, and say like, oh, I had this idea, let's try this? Or do they pretty much, does the idea always start with you? It, I mean, I have a great policy. I have a yeah. wonderful team, like I said. And so sometimes they will have an idea of what we could do or mm -hmm. improve something. And I have an open door policy where they can always, you know, come mm -hmm. and share their ideas. And I want them to. But most of the illusions will come from from my ideas. I've mm -hmm. been dreaming up magic since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I've got a notebook. It's pretty old and falling <laughs> apart with all sorts of uh -huh. ideas. Some things I've done. Some things I look back now and say, mm -hmm. oh, that's so stupid. Why would you even <laughs> think that? But some things I think uh -huh. I, I still have no idea how I will do this, even mm -hmm. though someday I want to accomplish this. And are the people in the show with you mm -hmm. pretty much all, um, like, are they interested in magic? Do they want to be magicians on their own and this is training? Oh, no, or is no, it like not they're separate performers? No, no, I mean, they're, they're dancers, uh -huh. so they, they come from a dance audition. Uh -huh. uh, we either do a New Yorker. Vegas for dance auditions. But I mean, it's yeah. not like dancers who are like, but no, I'd like no, no. to do magic. No, in fact, most yeah. of the time we prefer people who don't have magic experience. Oh, why is that? Uh, just because we'd rather, um, sometimes if they've done magic, they, mm -hmm. you know, they know another, it's, it's protection from <laughs> others, uh, uh, trying to keep our secrets closer and our community oh, closer. Yeah. And it's also, we want to train them our version and our way of, of, of oh, approaching operations. Mm -hmm. So. And you said something really interesting earlier um, before we had started mm -hmm. that no one knows everything else how to do like every oh, single right. other trick. Right. So it's compartmentalized. Yes, it is. Uh, we Everybody's on secrecy agreements that, right. you know, they can't and won't talk. But even still, they don't know how the overall illusions work. They just know what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. for that one thing. So the magic is really kept well. Uh -huh. 
And if I have something made by a welder or a builder, mm -hmm. they might just work on one element that way. They don't, nobody knows the whole secret mm -hmm. of the illusion. And so then what about instances where I guess like you need a backup, like even a backup person, like how many people down the road, I guess, are oh, compartmentalized? Sure. Sure. Um, I mean, we, like we train every contingency, so we try uh -huh. to do backups, or you know, if, if so this person gets sick, this person mm -hmm. can do that job too. So uh -huh. we we do, uh, you know, we, we it is the secrets are very important, but so is the operation as well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like there are a few, and then in a big illusion like with the truck, with, sure. with a million dollars, mm -hmm. did you have to let like everyone else know, like corporate know how how were Not you able to Not corporate, but keep because there was a million dollars cash, there was uh -huh. a lot of security involved mm -hmm. in that. And the security had to know quite a bit about how this truck was going to magically appear uh -huh. because they probably thought I would make the cash disappear, which yeah, yeah, yeah. who knows, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean they had their people like on stage? Oh, yeah. Like, it was another like, element. In addition to an uh -huh. outdoor stage that had to be crazy engineered mm -hmm. for the weight of this 20-ton truck uh -huh. and the truck itself, which was also just tough to make appear, mm -hmm. we had to deal with all of the security people and say, you know, work mm -hmm. with where they were comfortable being present and mm -hmm. not. So it was just more uh -huh. obstacles that we had to deal with. Because that makes me think of, like, for the Oscars, mm -hmm. the actresses, you know, borrow, like, the fancy jewelry, right, right. but then they have, like, security with them yes, because exactly. they don't need to walk off with, you know, a million right, dollar right. necklace. And I don't know if it's more like somebody, they're going to walk off, maybe they would, someone. <laughs> maybe <but> both. <laughs> some actresses, but it's more like they don't want somebody to take it from uh -huh. them or, you know, for them to yeah. lose a piece. Cause Either way. <laughs> I, you know, I know people lose earrings yeah. all the time, so. Right, right. And, oh, my gosh, can you imagine, like, yes, there it yes. goes. I mean, it's probably happened, so. <laughs> I'm sure it ha There's a reason they have security yes, with exactly. that. Yes, exactly. That didn't just magically right. appear. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so what is the hardest illusion that you've done? The most difficult sure, to Sure, definitely execute? the armored truck because, uh -huh. you know, it was daylight, outdoors, 15,000 people all around it. And I just had security and the weight of this truck. Was, mm -hmm. And I had two weeks to come up with this from scratch. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely the hardest thing. On a regular basis, I, I love to involve the audience in the show. Mm -hmm. I make it very interactive. So throughout the whole show, I bring audience on stage and ask them to be part of the magic and part of the show. And... Um, I do one thing where we bring 10 random volunteers. We throw 10 Frisbees out. That way it's totally random. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not great at aiming with Frisbees. <laughs> but we have 10 random people on stage, and we surround them all different parts of the stage and create an illusion in the middle of that, and mm -hmm. that's the most difficult of, It's because it's totally impossible circumstances. With So when you say you create an illusion in the middle, so you bring mm -hmm. the 10 people out, they make a yep. circle. Yeah, they, they exam the complete the stage is completely empty. Uh -huh. empty. I even leave the leave the theater so I can't misdirect them. Uh -huh. And we, you know, they basically surround the stage uh, uh, and, and something happens in the middle of all these volunteers. And so working with volunteers, mm -hmm. do you ever get worried that someone's going to start either figure it out or start saying things and like oh, try sure. to that take Oh, it happens over? all, you know, they don't figure it out. Uh -huh. But it happens all the time. We get chatty volunteers, we get mm -hmm. shy volunteers, we get uh -huh. volunteers who were so excited to raise their hand and volunteer. Uh -huh. But they don't speak English, <laughs> you know. So that makes so so makes that makes it hard. It, well, it makes it fun to be honest, uh -huh. because it makes it different and it makes uh -huh. it exciting. And, and for the audience, you know, that one time that funny thing happened, they mm -hmm. feel special because they were there right. when that happened. That's right. That's right. Because you want to see like the special show. Oh, right? and every <laughs> night, and that's why we customize it. That's why I invite so many volunteers uh -huh. to be part of the show, and I even take the magic into the audience. There's mm -hmm. a whole well, there's a few parts where the magic happens to everybody mm -hmm. in the audience too. So that um, because I do, it is special and it right. is unique and changes every night. Absolutely. And that's what you want, too, because then you can go back to the same show and it's not actually the exactly. same show. And so what is the difference between this? Like, is it another category? And like the people who do like in the box, you know, mm -hmm. suspended above Times Square type of magic and illusion. I would say like, those are more like stunts. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. kind of sometimes they're death defined stunts they're, um, or escapes. Mm -hmm. I, I like life way too much. I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy living well, so uh -huh. I don't want to put my life on the line like uh -huh. that. Um, I feel like choosing a career in the arts already is putting my life on the line. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, it's that, yeah, that would be a kind of escapologist or a stuntman kind of thing, which uh -huh. I respect them. I think it's uh -huh. wonderful what they do, uh, just not my style. And so is that still considered like... It's kind of on the, the umbrella. umbrella. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it definitely would be, I'd say, overall. And when you were getting started, so for any kids up mm -hmm. there who are like, I really want to be a magician, like I've got my starter kit and now yes. I'm watching like YouTube videos yeah, or yeah. whatever to learn, what is the next step? How do you even, it seems like such a nebulous path of like, where does that come from? Where does it go? You know, even with YouTube now, uh, back then it was for me, it was mail order VHS right. tapes was my YouTube. Uh, but back then I, I still got most of my magic and my education of magic from books. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these books have been around for many, many years. Uh -huh. The principles are still the same. You know, what fooled somebody, mm -hmm. you know, in the 1920s still fools somebody this right. year. Um, so it can just be built on. So I'd say, you know, it's a lot of self-education. Edu mm -hmm. 
a lot of passion, a lot of ded dedication to, to really want to do it and ultimately to make it entertaining and fun. And one of the things you had mentioned earlier, speaking of entertaining sure. and fun, was that the styles have just changed so much mm -hmm. that the original cutting someone in half was, and you said, sort of like a um, boring science video. Yeah, it took uh, a long time. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it was, um, you know, things are a lot more, everything in entertainment is flashier and quicker mm -hmm. and faster pace and has more going on, mm -hmm. whether it's a YouTube video or a concert or a movie. Mm -hmm. But magic, especially, the illusions and the magic, the core of it's very similar. But the style, it's a lot faster pace. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, at least in my instance, a lot faster pace. So I perform, I researched for years the mm -hmm. original version of Sawing a Woman in Half. Mm -hmm. And I perform it in my show. And the original version was very dry. It was mm -hmm. kind of a lecture. It was like, you know, we're going to strap her to the table. We're going to uh, saw her slowly. And our version it's, uh, has the same elements. We have volunteers examine everything and strap her to the table with uh, old-fashioned leather straps. Mm -hmm. and So she can't move. And then when we cut her in half... We d I just made it more fun. I, w I would not want to sit through that today myself. I would because of my magic history, you know, <laughs> right. fandom. But for me, I want. I thought, what can I do to make this a fun experience for me and the audience? So mm -hmm. I, I make it uh, interactive. You know, I will sometimes pick volunteers that look like mm -hmm. they're going to be squeamish or scream or yeah. have fun, you know. <laughs> and then we make it fun for both of us, so. And do your volunteers ever get, like, pre-picked? Is there no, someone out there no. or it's always, it's like, always, a frisbee? It's or always something? random. If I see somebody on the front row or see somebody there and I can just tell they're having a great time, mm -hmm. It's kind of typecasting. I think, oh, they would be really fun to bring up for this bit. Uh, so I might go out and grab them for that one mm -hmm. thing, but I don't know them. I don't. M sometimes my friends or family will come. They'll be a fr either wanting me to pick them, uh, like when my cousins come there, pick me. You know, <laughs> but it, it doesn't work that way. It needs to be somebody who uh, I've never met before, who's not in on it, who's not going to help me out, uh, or can't anticipate something. And so, do your friends know how you do no. all these tricks? Even my family, my uh, parents, they'll uh, see the show a few times a year, uh -huh. and they still don't know how I do a lot of stuff. And so, are they? fans more of the illusion or do they feel like, like I want to know <laughs> you know uh, a little both uh -huh. the, you know my sister too they'll come back and say so that new illusion <laughs> how do you do it <laughs> <laughs> and like waiting yeah and I'll say uh -huh. oh I said very well thank you <laughs> and so I yeah because I feel like there are certain jobs that mm -hmm. people want to know about more especially a job like this that is more of a performance yes, of course yes. that it's like how did you make that happen? And right. like, no, 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 you can tell me. Oh, yeah, exactly. But it destroys it completely. It's well, like even the sawing and half thing that uh, we talked about, yeah. um, fluke, like I told you, it's random picking. And mm -hmm. a fluke deal, a couple years ago, my dad got picked from the audience to mm -hmm. be on stage for that. And I walk out on stage, and he's there, and I'm there, and we kind of have that <laughs> look. And I don't say anything um, because the audience will think, oh, he's in on it. But right. he, he was thinking, okay, now I'm finally going to figure this out because <laughs> I'm right here. And he's uh -huh. strapping her in really tight with the straps uh -huh. and the leashes and locking around. And he's just so intent and still doesn't know <laughs> even right up there and even the right up there event. after yeah after he's seen it many years uh -huh. and many times before he thinks okay i finally have the front view i can get right. it and still know and next up for you you're gonna be in lake tahoe is i right? am i am so excited to go back there <laughs> and how long will you be in lake tahoe uh, i will be there all summer uh june through labor day Okay. And uh, where can people find you if they want to interact? Where can people find you to get tickets to sure, the Sure. RobLake.com. Uh, you can get tickets there, I think, starting um, May 1st. I think tickets go on sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were there over the winter, and it was I had a wonderful yeah. time. It's gorgeous up there. It is so beautiful there. And I'm really excited to bring the show back. It'll be another amazing show, I'm sure. Well, thank you so much, Rob, for being in the studio with oh, me today. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Zoe Hewitt. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Zoe Hewitt. And I also host our Shark Tank after show, so I'm here Monday evenings at 10, 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.